How many weeks have you been out here? Is this the second oh, week? This is my second week out. And how many weeks will you be bringing uh, I'll berries? I'll go into uh, September, beginning of September. And uh, what uh, types of berries will be coming in? Uh, well, I have the lally berries, uh, Marion blackberries, boysenberries, uh, dirks and blackberries, black satin blackberries, dewberries, young berries, uh, black cap raspberries, and red raspberries. And there are a few others that I can't think of right now, but that's most of them. A lot of berries. Other, other fruits, such as cherries and peaches and so on, I, I have along the way, but mostly berries. And you're out in uh, Didley. Right. Do you sell off the farm there, too? Uh, I will. Uh -huh. We used to do you pick, but uh, we no longer do that, but uh, we'll still sell off the farm, of course, if someone wants. And how much uh, acreage do you have in berries? Uh, just two, about two acres. And uh, how many people work out there? Uh, well, it's mostly just myself and my wife as far as the real work goes. That's that's it. All right. Beautiful looking berries. Thank you. So, uh, okay, well, I'm across the street from the farmer's market, and these guys are, uh, I don't know what these guys are doing. We're, uh, we're, we're working with the, uh, with the Boys and Girls Club of the North Valley, uh, uh, the Chico Sexy. and the Paradise uh, Boys and Girls Club. Uh -huh. and, uh, and what this is is a staff development day, and... Uh, and what we're doing is we're giving back to everybody that uh, that gives to us during the year. So right now uh, we're, we're playing a little road rules and uh, we're getting little clues here and there. And we're here at the News Review uh, cleaning their windows and we're helping out everybody, like I say, that helps us out through the year. So giving back to the community, uh, helping everybody else. It's all about the community. Yeah. That has oh. helped us. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, how are you guys involved in this? I mean, how did you get involved with the uh, Boys and Girls Club? You brought them our resumes and we applied. Yeah. <laughs> we brought jobs. And now we have jobs. Most uh -huh. of us are rec majors, some of us are liberal studies majors, want to be teachers, so it's a good field to get into. Yeah. So, uh, are all of you from Chico State? Or? Yeah. yeah. No, I go to Butte. Butte. And we got a Butte. Chico College. All right. <laughs> but it's a good, you know, it's a great organization to work with. Uh, I love kids. I want to do this. Yeah, we love doing it. Uh, good on the resume. <laughs> so, so, so the costume uh, <laughs> is this? The costume. Are you the crew chief? We just like this a little every day. <laughs> I, yeah, you know, yeah, I thought the lipstick would bring out my eyes. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh. And Chico, you got to do a little something to be yeah, yeah, to uh, <laughs> 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 Okay, well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is uh, K-Pay Gardens. Yes, it is. And you're located, I guess, at K-Pay? Yes, <laughs> over across the river. Do you sell up your farm? Yes, there? we do. We have a, uh, a business going there, too. So, so either, it is a... We're on uh, Capay. 4th Avenue uh, in, 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 in Capay, about three miles Capay off the Capay is between Corning, Orland, yeah, Hamilton City. Go it's go kind of in the center of a triangle. The Hamilton City High School oh, yeah. and so make, make it right. Along the river? Oh, yes. Go we to uh, <laughs> about two miles to the, mile uh, the river. Over the railroad track, you, you, you make I the first left over the over the the canal and then go down to Fourth Avenue and turn right and then three miles on the on the right hand side. Uh, and you've been coming to the farmers market for quite a while. And yes, uh, Connie's dad was one of the original farmers market. Yeah, people. Carl. Yeah, Carl. Carl Weiner, so. mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of took over for him. He built the business up and then. Uh, He's getting a little older now, so he needs a little rest. Well, he's been a little elderly for a long time, but he <laughs> keeps going. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's 88 now. Yeah. Is he 88, Tony? And uh, like usual, you've got your potatoes. Uh, uh, what varieties do you have here? We have uh, the 
Pontiac, the red Pontiac and the Yukon Gold, and then we have uh, Roja Garlic and uh, Texas Sweet Onions and uh, Red Onions and, and uh, the uh, regular uh, yellow onions. They're, they're like, like a Walla Walla, but they're all, everything pretty sweet this year. Yeah. And it's all fresh out of the ground. Oh, too. yeah. Yeah, like, these these were just dug yesterday. The skins are still, uh, with, still real, real fresh. These, uh, I mean, they have the little skins that are flaking here a little bit. Fill it with your thumb. Yeah. So, yeah it'll, it'll it's really thicken. a different, uh, it's not potatoes, it's almost a different crop. But yeah. It tastes different. They're really the good first, rich. Uh, new, new potatoes are. They're that way. The skins are real. You don't have to peel them. You just cook them up. And you'll be here through the summer and into the fall. Yeah, we'll be here for probably yeah until the fall. Roller potatoes are gone. We used to hang them right here, and they say we're the bag, so we put them on. Well, you bet. Using my pasta, your cooking with them, you can do all kinds of stuff with them. Yeah. I sell them to Macy's and they sell them as a bread dip for $25 a bottle. So. The only difference between a bread dip and a salad dressing apparently is the price. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. Even though it's basically the same exact thing? Yeah. I mean, they buy they buy the Tuscan from me, they buy the Bloomin', the Tequila Tango, the Sicilian, the Sunny. The, this one he calls Spa because it's fat free. And then he sells the hot one too. And, and where, what do they charge for them? $25 a bottle. And they call it, because it's for? They call it a bread dip there. A bread dip. Yeah. So they can charge more money for it that way. That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy if you know. It's not crazy if you don't know. <laughs> so. It is. It's the first ingredient. Where my first ingredient is usually vinegar and then extra virgin olive oil. Right. Actually, okay. I can do that for you. All right. California Mystique. California Mist and California Mist. Mystique. There's two different lines. Oh, all right. And what's the difference between the two? Well, these all were my first line, and they all have similar ingredients. They're all extra virgin olive oil, rice vinegar, sesame seeds, either with things added or subtracted. So basically, these are all pretty much similar ingredients. This line was my creative line, and I got to do whatever I wanted with that. So this one is like a crayon raz, and we have a blue moon, which is blue cheese. Um, pear vinegar and extra virgin, tequila tango, and then some balsamics and handmade extra virgin olive oil. So they're a little bit, I don't know, a little bit more, they're just different. They're really different. They're not just the same flavors as you can get in the grocery store all the time. The people coming to the farmer's market get samples, so you can go right down. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the nice thing about coming here. And you got into this because of your kids? Yeah, we kids that wouldn't eat salads. And so basically I started with the Simply, which was a extra virgin and a um, rice vinegar, so it's a little bit sweeter. And then from there one of my friends had a gallbladder attack, and so I took the oil out. So that's how skinny came along, fat free. And they all just kind of evolved from there. Sure. Now we sell in Rayleigh's here in town, s and &S Produce, made in Chico in farmer's markets, and we also in about 250 stores all over Northern California at this point. So. And it was your first show in... Uh, the Prune Festival the prune in Yuba Fest. City. Uh, we didn't know how we were going to do. We'd never sold a bottle of it yet. I'd been making it for years for friends and family and that kind of thing, but it never actually sold any. So um, when we went into the Prune Festival, which was our first venue, we ended up running out the first day and had to go home that night and make more for the second day. <laughs> so that was pretty exciting. And from there, the business just kind of took off. And now you sell all over the place. All over the place. And... Um, Hopefully, we'll be in Southern California and quite a few of the other you know, states eventually as well. And how many people work for you now? I have seven currently right now, but we will go up as the um, season increases more towards Christmas. So it's not all family? You're, you're hiring from outside? Yeah, I use people with um, handicaps and disabilities and a lot of welfare to work with as well. And, and you got a good crew now. i got a great crew. All right. They're wonderful. 
Well, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. So, so we're talking with B&B &B Nursery and Propagators from Willows. That's right. And uh, how have you? Is, is this your first week at the market? No, we've here? actually been here about four weeks, and we come in the spring and fall when most of the old roses bloom the most. I was going to say you, you really concentrate on the roses. You've got we do, yeah, we do. <laughs> That's our, we have a specialty nursery, so the antique roses is our primary product. And then we have some ornamental grasses, and we do some perennials, mostly perennials that complement the old roses. But the main business is the antique roses. So tell me about the antique roses. Why, why do people get into the antique roses? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Um, they're very fragrant. They're very tough plants. A lot of them have survived in old home sites and cemeteries with no care at all. So these old roses are much tougher than the more uh, common hybrid teas. Uh, most of them have very distinct characteristics. A lot of the species roses are grown for the foliage, like this uh, Rosa Glauca has mm -hmm. um, blue gray foliage, and very distinctive, and it gets unique hips that are kind of maroon to orange. Mm -hmm. Very different. You have uh, several very different ones. Can you we tell me a little about, um, about some of them? Or? Sure. We have quite a few found roses, which is kind of unique. Anything that we call a found rose would be something we collect. So we've gone to old cemeteries. We have several from the Placerville Cemetery and uh, several from the Cherokee Cemetery. So what are the characteristics that, that make, make it that unique? Make, yeah. Well, when you are around these old roses a lot, you, you start looking for certain characteristics. But anything that's not a hybrid tea, anything that predates 1867, which is like the technical classification when the hybrid tea was introduced, um, they have different different flowers, different shapes to the to the bushes. And so pretty soon after you've been around these old roses, then you can recognize them. So the last time I went collecting, it was like December 3rd. Well, they were all dormant. But because we knew what we were looking for, we took cuttings and, and some of them had turned out to be very unique old roses. So, so, so give me an example. Do you have any um, in here? Sure. Let me see. This is a good example. Either one of these. It's the same variety. But we're calling this Eureka Lemon, and it's, um, it's super fragrant. It's probably the most fragrant rose that I brought today. Uh, it has a lot of characteristics that are different from a hybrid tea. They have very short uh, stems, very full. The little green eye is also very characteristic of the old roses. That's a real common trait. So, so this right in yeah. the center, that mm -hmm. little green there. Mm -hmm. That's real common. You don't see that in the hybrid teas. The foliage is a little bit different. It's a duller green, much smaller than the hybrid teas. And generally what that means is they're more drought tolerant and more disease resistant. And where did that one come from? Uh, that was collected out of the Sacramento Cemetery collection. There's a really nice collection at um, 10th and Broadway in Sacramento, and they have collected old roses from all areas in Northern California. And it's like a repository for some of these roses that have no names, no one knows what they are, but the people who are into the old roses realize that they're special. So, uh, like when we collect, we make sure Sacramento gets a, a duplicate, you know, a duplicate of what we're collecting. Is there any rose that you're particularly proud of finding yourself that you? Um, yeah, we have several. <laughs> Are there any of them here? Um, no, no, actually not. So they have to come out to Willows to you see. You do. Them? Yeah, you do. Little teaser there. You yeah. Do. Um, we yeah. have. We have a white uh, climbing rose that's super fragrant and it's yellow in the center and then white on the outside. Tough as nails, can handle any amount of drought, um, and it's very unique. I, some kind of noisette, which is an old classification from the late 1800s, and we know that much about it by its characteristics, but we're not sure what it is. So that's pretty special. And there's some damas, some autumn damas that um, are pretty unique, and I've actually replaced a lot of the purchased plants 
with these found roses that, because to me they're a little bit more fragrant and a little tougher. So the found roses are they're a large part of our collection. But we, um, we buy from a couple of old uh, garden rose nurseries. We carry buyers free stock. They're all own root. And most of what we carry dates before 1867. So you get a little bit of history in your garden. How did you get into this? Well, you know, I lived in an older home when I was in college, and there was a couple roses there that I knew were really different, very special. And I started research, and the research kind of showed me that there were a lot of different things out there besides the hybrid teas that were only available at that time. So we've been collecting probably 25 years. So is this a nursery that grew out of your interest in roses, or was that a nursery that was already there and sort of the roses have taken uh, over? Definitely the nursery grew out of the interest, for sure, yeah. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, huh? thank you. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, I'm talking with... Tim Groom. Tim, uh, with Feather Falls Soap Company, and... Uh, how long have you been making soap? Eight years. How'd Eight you get started doing that? Um, I got started because I was really unhappy with what was out there on the market, the synthetic soaps. My son was about six months old and I very health conscious and um, I was going to this herb farm in Auburn and they were given a class and I thought that would be excellent So for my family. Basically I um, did it just for the family and um, I just got such great feedback from family and friends that I gave it to so I thought well, this would make a great business and I'd be able to stay home with my son and also um, be providing a great product. So from there I just experimented and it took me about a year uh, to come up with all my formulas. The lemon tree was my first. The medicinal properties in it were something that I really felt was needed in, in the one that I made my family. And then from there, I just uh, experimented in. So how many products do you have now? Wow, I have uh, 16 different essences, and they come in the bar, of course, and then an uh, aroma mist which uh, is pure essential oil with spring water and it's wonderful for body and room, pets. There's a lot of medicinal purposes you could use it for, but the aroma is, is uh, one of the best medicinal properties. So, um, also I have a, a massage oil and uh, I have a, a mug for shaving, the old fashioned mug and brush, and a body essence of bath salt. Soap um, comes in different forms, and I have different baskets and boxes. And I, I see you've got a lot of uh, different uh, packs, like gift packs and yes, stuff too. Yes, yeah, the two pack, and then the three pack, which is really nice. I also have some baskets, which are really great gifts. So you have a website now too, right? www.featherfallssoap.com And just got to remember the two S's from the falls to the soap. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's wonderful. It works out really well. So is your sales over the web uh, increasing or how? They, are, they are increasing. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how... Uh, they are found because I don't pursue that very much, but I think word of mouth a lot, and um, I do have it posted on, you know, all my cards and getting out there to stores, and it's on all the labels, and it does really well. There's all the information on the site, so it's nice for people to go in and, and look at it and get more ideas on what they want to try, and I just mail order it and it works really well. Uh, how long have you been doing that? Well, the site's been up probably three years. Yeah, a little a close to three. Years. Yeah. How many employees do you have? Huh? Well, I, I have, I have a couple of girls that work the markets when I'm out on a show, and I have one. Um, employee that is just absolutely fabulous now and she works anywhere from part-time to full-time depending on on her schedule and my schedule you know and how the business goes and she is just wonderful and she does um, a lot of the shipping and receiving in the phone and answering all my emails for me 
so I can pursue other things in marketing and, uh, of course, sales. And, and so uh, it works out really well. And then I do have part-time um, help once in a while when the soap production part in making is up. And I do that about three times a year. And so I bring in a couple of part-time or just one part-time at that time just to help me out in weighing the oils and cutting and and doing that part. So you, you do like three batches a year and then you start? And you, you, well, I, yeah, it's a lot more than three batches a year. It's probably about um, in a three-month period, we'll make uh, four batches a, a week. And uh, it, it just depends. It, in, the, in the later, closer to um, July, then we might even go all the way into Christmas and maybe just stop right before December. And so that season might be a little bit longer and uh, four batches a day. And sometimes we've even jumped up to six batches a day. So it really depends on sales. And it's just increasing every year. And, and where do you, is this found besides the farmer's market? I, I sell it locally. Um, s and Made in Chico, Chico Natural Foods. Uh, whispering Prayers, um, there's a couple of salons, um, Molly Coddles, Julie's um, Eclipse, and I know there's another place I'm not thinking of, but then we have it in the outer areas. We have, have it in uh, Oroville and um, Corning and Redding, Red Bluff. And then all the way to Florida now we have it. So uh, yeah. just from the internet, in Nebraska, and it's it's getting to be everywhere. Then lots in San Francisco. So it's, it's wonderful. That internet is fabulous. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So we need the introduction. So um, okay, just tell us. Oh, you have the cap on there. I knew that. <laughs> uh, Okay, this is the same one. Okay, I'm standing here with... Richard Roth. Richard Roth. And uh, what's your favorite movie, Richard? Uh, uh, Lone Star. Lone Star. Great movie. I'm going to ask you a few questions. To the best of your knowledge. Here we go. In The Wizard of Oz, what is your favorite... Uh, what is the... Cut. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. We'll try to see it. Okay. In The Wizard of Oz, what is Dorothy's last name? Uh... Uh... I'm from Kansas. Uh, this is Francis. Francis. Yes. Almost. Gail. Gail. Okay. On the show The Simpsons, what is the name of Mr. Burns' assistant? Uh, that'd be Bernie. Bernie. Not quite. Uh, Waylon Smithers. You know, have you ever seen the show The Simpsons? Uh, a couple times, a couple but times, I don't yeah. watch much oh, TV. Oh, okay. Um, what famous baseball player's nickname was The Great Bambino? Uh, this Italian guy. You know, the Sultan of Swat. The... Uh, I'm not a baseball fan. Uh, neither am I, but, uh, Babe Ruth. Oh. Babe Ruth, yes, the, the Great Bambina. Okay. <laughs> According to the nursery rhyme, what, uh, what frightened Little Miss Muffet away? Oh. Oh. A spider. Yes, a spider. Okay, um, what is a hoagie? It's a type of sandwich. Yes, it is. What did the local newspaper say about Bill Clinton's recent death? Um, uh, which paper? Just the local newspaper. Uh, it, it said, uh, 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 good riddance. Good riddance. <laughs> 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 um, okay. Who fired the first shot in the Cold War? Uh... I don't think anybody did. That's why it was the Cold War. No one yeah. fired the first shot. Yeah. Okay. What disease did the famous baseball player Lou Gehrig die from? Oh, uh, it's a it's a disease named for a famous person. Uh, 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 Lou Gehrig. Yes, Lou Gehrig disease. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> When did Columbus supposedly, you know, discover America? Supposedly? Well, you know, the Indians oh. were here first, so. Right. You know, I'm not sure on that one. I think there's 
1492? Yes. Is this, you know, oh. traveled the, uh, the ocean blue, 1492. Yeah. Oh. Okay, um, what? wasn't familiar with the poetry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what city's nickname is Tinseltown? Uh, Hollywood. Yes. What movie holds the record for the most curse words and obscene gestures? A lot of, watch a lot of in, uh, obscene movies? I, I try to. Yes. It wouldn't be Animal House. No. Yeah. It's, it's very, very close. Fun. But uh, South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. That's all we needed. Thank you very much. And, and what was this uh, for? This is a school project for drama. So, yeah, we're filming a movie. And, wow, it and, actually worked. And uh, <laughs> you've, you've got uh, just a few days yeah. left. Yeah. To get this in. Yeah, this is the final. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thank oh, you. Thank you guys. Yeah, no, seriously. Okay. Whatever. Just tell them to say the same things. Yeah. Thank okay, you. We're here at uh, the Combs Ranch. They got it. Fresh apricots. Uh, Fresh apricots without sprays or pesticides. Without and, all the nasties. And how, how long will you have them? Not very much longer. How long are we going to have these for? This variety only for about another week. Yeah, this variety only another week, then we have another variety. Then peaches start coming. Yeah. Then the peaches start coming. Just so, so where is your ranch located? Uh, on Highway 7, well, actually Cold Canyon Road off of Highway 70 between Paradise and Oroville there. You know. and, and do you have a uh, uh, stand there at the farm? No, but you can come to the farm itself and, uh, you know, if you want to. Uh, that's Mrs. Combs. She's the owner right there. That pretty lady. Smile, Kara. There you go. There you go. There you go. I want to be on the camera. Here. <laughs> yeah. No, don't be Yeah. I don't want to be breaking your camera enough. And and out there at the uh, farm, you've got the apricots. And are you selling anything else? Yeah, we'll be selling peaches shortly. Peaches, plums, nectarines. All nice fresh fruit right off the tree, and it's all refrigerated right there. It's just great stuff. And this is, uh, like I say, no sprays or pesticides. It's real good for you. Nothing like fresh fruit to get you going. All right, I'll go have a one. I, I hear she paid off. What do you mean, uh, she? The, 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 the woman that we were, we were writing about last week. I don't, I don't know what I was talking about, but. Tell me what you know. Uh, you, you hated people last week. No, that's not true. You, you, you don't? No, I love people. Why? Why what? Why, why do you love people? I can't help myself. It's innate. It's within me. It's sort of your philosophy of life? No, it doesn't have anything to do with philosophy at all. Uh, what, what does it have to do with? It has to do with just what's there. In the very core. From the, pardon me? From the very core is what you're thinking. I don't know. Don't know where it comes from. It's not from the dark side. The, you know, it's, it's, I'm not the knower. 